So let's start talking about um, solving um, motion problems using graphs. In particular, we're going to start with position time graphs. All right, a position time graph simply maps the location of an object as a function of time. When motion is in a single direction, you can create a graph that appears on a single line. Once it changes direction, it becomes difficult to um, evaluate that motion. Um, so you you need to go to a um, XY coordinate system where um, motion that is positive with respect to the reference point is in quadrant one and at a motion that is negative relative to the reference point or sort of behind the reference point would be in quadrant four. All right, so let's look at um, motion in one direction in particular so you can sort of see what they look like. Um, in this particular case, you got the turtle that's kind of walking across the screen. Um, and you'll notice that the points are equidistant uh, from each other. So that means that the distance he travels with each second is the same, so it's a constant velocity. Now if you look at the second, the turtle the second time, uh, you will see that within each time interval the dots are farther and farther away from each other, um, so you've got an increasing in velocity, so it's, he's, excel he's got a positive acceleration. And in, this, in the last one, you can see that the points become small, closer and closer together over time, so that means you're looking at a decreasing velocity or a negative acceleration. Alright, so constant velocity graphs, you know, again, those are the ones that have the same distance between each of the points. Alright, so here are those points mapped in an XY plane. So, and you can see that they're still, di the distance between them is the same uh, for each one. And if you connect them, you get a straight line. So a constant velocity will always be a straight line on a position time graph. All right, so we've got three lines. One, the red line that he goes 10 meters in half in five seconds, and the, then he goes uh, 10 meters in, um, or he goes five meters in 10 seconds. So distance again is the difference between the ending and starting points because it's it's the you know it's the um, all right we refer to that as change in x. So that Greek letter tri the Greek triangle is the um, Greek letter delta, which means change in. So the chain delta x or the change in x is equal to a later position minus the original position. So if you look at the graph, you simply read the y values, and that's how you get your um, that's how you get your displacement. Now, whenever the direction is constant, displacement and distance will be the same. So in here, let's look at those three points. You got your equation. So you've got um, the first displacement is 10 meters, second displacement is 10 meters, and the last displacement is 5 meters. Now if it were from like 10 to 0, then it would be a negative 10 meters. So you can have both positive and negative displacements, but only positive um, distances. Instantaneous velocity is the rate at which displacement changes. So when we write that equation out, you get V for velocity is equal to delta X divided by delta T, which is the change in X over the change in time. And if you look at the equation for slope, you get Y2 minus Y1 equals X2 minus X1. And now look at those two equations. They are identical. So this simply means that instantaneous velocity is the sl slope of a line segment on a position time graph. Okay, so instantaneous velocity is, is um, so instantaneous speed is simply velocity without direction. All right, so let's look at the equations. So the, the displacement for the first, or the velocity for the first one is one meter per second. For the second, two meters per second. He went same dis displacement half the time. And then the last one is 0.5 meters per second. He went half the displacement in the, in the 10 seconds. And, and these make complete sense. So slope really does give you an indication of how uh, fast the object is moving. Now average speed and average velocity. Speed is the rate at which uh, 
distance changes. So its speed is distance divided by time. Velocity is delta x over delta t, which we just talked about. Um, now, veloc when velocity doesn't change, average velocity equals instantaneous velocity. Now, but here's a case where we've got changing velocities. Okay, so we've got the turtle that heads to the to the right for a period of time, then he hangs there, then he kind of travels to back to the reference point a little bit faster, then he kind of slows down, moves to left, stays there for a little while, and then moves very slowly and almost reaches the, um, the reference point. Now, if you look at that that motion, that is described by this graph. All right, so we're going to do some calculations based on this particular graph. So the first thing we're going to look for is individual displacements, the distances, and the, the velocities. We've got displacement between 0 and 1, which is 2.5 miles. So it sits from 3, started out at 0.5, ended at 3. Makes sense. Um, so then the second one is 0, then negative 3, because he went back to the reference point, so he lost 3 miles negative 2 miles, 0 miles, 1 mile, and then the same values distance-wise, but we're taking the absolute value, so we're always going to have positive um, information. Now, so then if we want to find the instantaneous velocities, we're going to find the slope of each of the individual line segments. So 2.5 divided by 1 hour, 2, plus 2.5 miles per hour, doesn't, travel, doesn't move at all for the next hour, then he goes back to the reference point, so that's negative 3 miles per hour, negative 2 miles per hour, 0 miles per hour, and 1 mile per hour. Now, it does not have to be individual, everything doesn't have to be 1 mile. It could be 2 miles, 2 and a half, I'm sorry, 2 and, two and a half hours, it could be 30 minutes, it could be any time interval, um, as long as the, 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 the line segment, there's an individual line segment for each of the time intervals. So you can't change over time for, for velocities, but it has to be a, a specific uh, time interval. Now let's look at sort of the longer term um, information. So we have total displacement, which is the final position, which is negative 1, minus the initial position, which is 0.5. So that's negative 1.5. Alternatively, you can just add up the individual um, displacements, and you get the same thing. Distance, you add up the individual um, distances, and that's how you get the 8.5. Or another way to think about it is take the absolute value of the individual displacement variables. Um, and then add those up. So you get 8.5 miles. Now in this case, um, when you find average velocity, it's total displacement divided by total time. So negative 1.5 divided by 6. So negative 0 0.25 miles per hour. And then 1.25 miles per hour for uh, speed because our distance is 8.5. All right, so now let's give you a chance to solve a problem. All right, so I want you, based on this graph, I want you to find the instantaneous velocities, the total displacement, total t distance, and the average velocity and average speed. So go ahead, stop the video, and when you're um, ready, you can come back and look at the answers, and if you have any questions, you can uh, raise your hand and ask me, and I will come by and check your work. So pause the video now. When you're done, restart and you'll get your answers. All right, so here are your answers, the individual velocities, um, the displacements, and the average speed and average velocities. Um, if you have any questions, just ask.